Good evening, CP family. It's your mom, Cheryl. I just wanted to share some more good tips for you guys. I know how hard it is when you're trying to put your kiddos to bed at nighttime. Well, I got just the thing. So, I have 10 tips for a smooth bedtime routine. So, are you tired of spending hours trying to get little ones to sleep at night? And these are from my notes down here, you guys. So, do you find yourself getting frustrated with uh, never-ending bedtime battles? You know, sometimes they have a tantrum. I'm not going to sleep. Not tonight. Not today. Well, you're not alone. As parents, we all want our children to get a restful sleep. That's what they need, right? But getting them to grab but getting them actually to fall asleep can be a challenge. So, let's face it. Well, we all know how important sleep is for our children. And even more so for parents, sleepless nights can leave us less productive and being like zombies during the day. Uh, we can be cranky. Toddlers don't want to make things any easier for us, do they? Uh, I know my granddaughter, Bam. <laughs> she wouldn't go to sleep for nothing uh, last night. So, I understand. So, these are the 10 tips that I usually use to kind of work on her. And it usually helps out a lot. So, but for the fact, because we're going to share with you the 10 tips for a successful bedtime routine for a toddler, these tips are tried and true, and they'll help you establish a consistent and peaceful bedtime routine for the little ones that you love. Now, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Another uh, boring video for a bedtime routine. Not this time. <laughs> That's wrong, and you are currently in a part of the internet where we are so keen on child care and how to make the whole process a lot easier uh, for you as a parent. And we are not gonna share an average run of the meal tutorial. Not that, you guys. We're gonna make a practical, interesting, fun, and most importantly, effective <laughs> routine. So, let's get ready. These are my notes that I got written down here. So. Let's get ready to say goodbye to those bedtime battles and hello to peaceful and stressful new bedtime routine. Let's dive in, let's dive in together and discover the secrets and getting your toddler to sleep like a baby. One, body. So tip one, establish a consistent bedtime. So to establish a successful bedtime routine, it is very important to establish a consistent bedtime. This means choosing a time that works for your child and sticking to it. Even on weekends, it's not easy to achieve this at first, but it helps in the long run as children tend to thrive better on routine and having a consistent bedtime will help them regulate their sleeping habits and their sleeping patterns. For a start, this is what I got you guys, brainstorm a reasonable bedtime for your toddler based on their age and stick to it every night, even on weekends. For a start, bring, uh, for a start, Brainstorm that reasonable time again. Make sure it's based on their age and stick to the um, and stick to it every night, even on weekends, you guys. This is actually a trick to this. It's actually a trick to it, and that is consistency. So the trick is consistency to keep them on target, so that trying to establish this routine avoid fluctuations and stick to a regular time. So tip two, create a calm environment. Sometimes you guys see some of my videos. I have that white noise. I even put my uh, new grandbaby to sleep. I was typing. If you guys look on some of our videos, the ASMR, the typing video, she actually went to sleep with that. <laughs> so I don't know how common that was, but anyway. So think about what you always need when you're trying to wind down after a long day. 
Yes, a calm and peaceful environment. Mm, that does a lot, no? So the same goes for our toddlers. By creating a calming atmosphere in their bedroom, we're ending a signal to their brain that it's time to relax and prepare for sleep. But creating a calm environment, it's creating a calm environment, it isn't about reducing noise and distractions. It's all about creating a space that feels safe and comfortable. So this can um, include soft lighting, comfortable bedding, and familiar objects such as stuffed animals and blankets. Like sometimes they have their favorite blanket. I know I do, y'all. <laughs> so when our toddlers feel safe and comfortable in their environment, they're most likely to fall asleep faster and stay asleep longer, you know, without that tossing and turning. So step three, wind down time. After kids have had a really exciting day filled with playtime, learning, and exploration, their little bodies are bursting with energy and their minds are still buzzing with all the fun they've had, but now it's time for bed. Um, and you want them to settle down and you want them to go to sleep. Mm, just how do we do that, right? How do we get them to go to sleep? <laughs> so the answer is wind down time. So wind down time is a period before bedtime where you engage in relaxing activities with your child, such as reading a book, uh, taking a warm bath, or listening to soothing music. This helps the child calmly transition from the excitement of the day to the peacefulness of sleep. Just like hitting the brakes on a car before coming to a complete stop. So that's kind of sort of what I do. Um, I usually get my kiddos down. I get them calmed down, get them relaxed. I usually give them a wind down activity and eventually they usually drift off to sleep. So here we go. And let's be honest, wind down time isn't just for toddlers, adults need it too. Uh, we may not have parents to read us uh, bedtime stories, but we can always create our own wind down routine to help us relax and unwind before bed, like having a cup of tea, uh, doing some light sketching, and reading a book. Here's step four limit screen time do you remember the last time you stayed up late scrolling through the phone or binge watching your favorite show um, how do you feel the next morning tired sometimes i do groggy and irritable yeah right <laughs> well imagine feeling like that every day as a toddler not getting enough sleep and rest so limiting screen time before bedtime is crucial for establishing a successful bedtime routine for toddlers. Uh, the blue light emitted from electronic devices can disrupt sleep patterns and make it harder for the little ones to fall asleep. Plus the stimulation from the screen can keep their minds active and prevent them from relaxing and winding down before bed. Yes. Mm -hmm. I know it's a daunting task of this a toddler to put down their tablet, it is, <laughs> or turn the TV off. It doesn't have to be a punishment for them, it doesn't. Um, to get them, you know, you just have to be creative in um, getting them to, like I said, wind down and relax. The next thing, make screen time a reward, which I do TV time, screen time, phone time, tablet time, it's a reward. So make the uh, screen time a reward for completing their bedtime routine or use a fun timer to signal when it's time to turn the screens, um, you know, to turn them off. Um, it can even be a great opportunity for the quality time with your little one. You can read a book together and have a calming bath or simply chat and struggle before bed. 
snuggle, not struggle, but it is a struggle to go to bed with for, for the toddler. But if you snuggle with them, sometimes pat their back. Mm, I do that sometimes, I pat her back. And she usually goes to sleep too. So oh, there go another tip. Okay, so tip five offer a snack, which I do right before my kiddos go to bed, I offer them a snack. So offering a snack before bedtime can seem like a small gesture, but it can make a big difference in our toddler's bedtime routine. Not only can it help your child feel full and satisfied, but it can also promote better sleep by stabilizing blood sugar levels. Imagine your toddler lying in bed with their tummy grumbling and keeping them awake. This is not an ideal situation for anyone involved, but by offering a light and healthy snack, uh, you can help, uh, yeah, you can help eliminate uh, hunger, hunger pains. I know one of my kiddos, she wake up in the middle of the night with hunger pains. <laughs> But usually I try to give her something to stabilize her and, and sometimes it works. It, it, it really does. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, again, so uh, it eliminates hunger pain and creates a sense of comfort and security for the little one. So, of course, the type of snack you offer is important. It should be nutritious and low in sugar to avoid causing a spike in energy. Uh, levels that could keep your child awake. A banana, which today I just gave everybody a banana. A small bowl of cereal or a piece of cheese or is a great option. For me, I try to give some fruit, something healthy um, in regards to uh, making sure it doesn't spike their energy, but kind of relaxes them. So um, in addition to helping your child uh, sleep better, uh, offering a bedtime snack can also be a special moment for you and your child to share. Uh, it can be a time to bond and relax together before bedtime creating happy memories that will last a lifetime. And we normally kind of do that too, while they're eating their snack, we talk. And uh, we, you know, kind of talk about what we did for the day while we're winding down and, you know, what we need to do for the next day. So it does kind of bring you a little bit closer. So here we go. So the next time you're putting your toddler to bed, consider offering a little snack to make them get restful, nice sleep they need. Number six. This is bedtime rituals. Bedtime rituals such as bedtime stories, snuggles, and cuddles contribute to a feeling of safety, love that can help ease any anxiety or tears um, your child may have about going to bed. Um, are not just a cute and cuddly way to say goodnight to your little one. They are essential for creating successful bedtime routines for toddlers. These rituals have signal to your child that it's time to wind down and prepare for sleep. Uh, imagine a toddler who just finished playing with their toys and suddenly their parent tell them it's time for bed. Well, without any warning or transition, a child might feel anxious and resistant to going to sleep. However, if the child is given a consistent and predictable bedtime ritual, uh, they know what to expect and can begin to prepare themselves mentally and physically for bedtime. Tip seven, pajamas and comfortable clothes. Oh yes, how do we put on our comfy book PJs? Kind of relaxes us too. Get your snacks, snuggle up. So pajamas and comfortable clothing are a crucial part of successful bedtime routine for toddlers. Uh, by choosing soft and breathable fabrics, you can help your child regulate their body temperature, feel safe and secure, and relax into a restful night's sleep. Tight and comfortable clothing can be distracting, uncomfortable, making it hard for your child to relax and drift off to sleep. So kind of make it loose, relax, and soft cotton or some type of fabric that feels nice and, and cuddly. So here we go. Pajamas can also provide a sense of security and comfort for your child. Many children have a favorite pair of pajamas or a specific tough animal they like to sleep with, uh, which can help them feel safe, secure as they drift off to sleep. These are great, these are great. So tip eight, uh, provide comfort objects, you guys. So as parents, we all want our children to feel safe and secure, especially at bedtime. Um, that's why providing a comfort object 
that can be important for a successful bedtime routine for toddlers. So comfort objects uh, for me, I do use stuffed animals. So comfort objects such as favorite stuffed animal or blanket can provide a sense of familiarity and security that helps your child feel more at ease when it's time to go to bed. Um, these objects can become a special part of our child's uh, bedtime routine, uh, signaling that it's time to wind down and get ready for sleep. But comfort objects aren't just about creating a sense of security. Uh, they can also be source of comfort and companionship for your child throughout the night. Uh, having a familiar object to hold on to can help ease anxiety uh, and promote a sense of calm, making it easier for your child to fall asleep and stay asleep. So sometimes my child has to hold on to something. She has this big stuffed animal and she does have a favorite blanket that she likes to use and it does help her to fall asleep. So tip nine, avoid stimulation. As a parent, we know how important it is to have a successful bedtime routine for our little ones. However, achieving this can ch be challenging, um, especially when it comes to avoiding stimulation. But why is it so crucial to create a calm, peaceful environment for our toddlers for our, you know, for before bed? All right. So, well, here it comes down to the way our brain works. So melatonin is a hormone that controls our body's natural sleep, wake cycle, and is released in response to darkness, which helps us feel sleepy and ready for bed. However, exposure to bright light, no light noise, and stimulating activities can disrupt the sleep, uh, disrupt the release of melatonin, which makes it harder for our bodies to prepare for sleep. For toddlers who are still developing their sleep pattern, avoiding stimulation is even more critical um, as they are easily overstimulated and it can take longer for them to settle down and get ready for sleep. Tip 10. Now, if you've gotten all the way down to the end of this video, I am so happy that I was able to share this with you guys and hopefully my 10 tips will help you to be able to have a bedtime routine for your toddler, um, able to help them have a calm, peaceful night's sleep. So tip 10, be patient and stay consistent. So bedtime routine can be challenging task for us parents. It's um, easy to get frustrated when your toddler release, mm, <laughs> release, yeah, they do release a lot of anger, but, um, Sometimes you get frustrated when they refuse to go to bed um, or has trouble falling asleep, but here we go. As with most things in life, being patient and staying consistent are the keys to success. Just be patient, be calm, and sit down and relax yourself with them. <laughs> you know, find something to do. Both of y'all can relax and calm down. So, patience is the key. Patience is the key. So. Patience is important because every child is different, so it may take longer to adjust a new bedtime routine, while others uh, may adapt quickly. It's important to give your child time to adjust and not to expect immediate results. So as soon as you lay your child down, most of the time they just don't go right to sleep. So be patient, allow them to relax and drift off to sleep. Staying patient and positive will help your child feel more re relaxed and comfortable during bedtime. So consistency is also crucial for a successful bedtime routine. Uh, children thought, mm, and I'm sorry about that little beep, I got changed on batteries, y'all. So children thrive on a routine and uh, predictability. Uh, when established in a consistent bedtime routine, your child will know what to expect to feel more secure. Uh, consistency also helps to reinforce good habits and behaviors, making it easier for your child to fall asleep. So we made it to the end and I had hopefully those good 10 tips uh, will enable you to be able to put your toddler to sleep. And um, that is it for our 10 successful bedtime uh, routine for our toddlers uh, with these tips. You could create a peaceful, restful sleep environment for your little one. <laughs> Hopefully we have sweet dreams. My name is Cheryl, and thank you once again for tuning in. 
supporting our channel, and hopefully what I'm offering to you, it will help you to help another child. Again, thanks from the CP family. I'm Cheryl. Sweet dreams. Ha, ha, ha.